Uh, COVID-19 affected our company pretty severely. Uh, it effectively stopped almost all work here on March 24th, other than a very, very small amount of pre-existing commercial boats, uh, our Alaska fishing fleet basically, that we were allowed to finish under very tight circumstances. We pretty much just followed our governor's orders and came into work and packed it all up and went home. Hey, welcome back. I'm Chris Chase with the Western Flyer Foundation. And this is episode 21 in the series following the rebuild of the Western Flyer. And as you heard from Pete Russ there in that opening sequence, the project did get put on hold 100% back on March 24th, 2020. But it's already June and the project is back up and running, which is just great news. Tim Lee and Ryan got to work back on May 15th and they finished up those covering boards on the aft deck that were just not quite finished before the project got put on hold. And just in the last week, they transitioned into building the aluminum bulwarks to the main working deck. And you heard me right, aluminum bulwarks. And that's pretty much what this episode is all about. We're talking about the aluminum bulwarks. How do we choose that and why it's the best application in this part of the boat? And I just want to check back in a little bit with Tim and Pete and find out how COVID is affecting the project and what the near future looks like. So let's dive into this one. Up to this point in the project, we've tried really hard to stay true to the original construction methods used in 1937. Aside from a few material substitutes like the purple heart around the stern and maybe the sepal hull planking, the techniques used to rebuild the Western Flyer are really true to the original construction. But that's about to change. As I've said in previous episodes, fresh water is the real enemy of wood boat construction. And anything the builder can do to keep water from leaking down from above into the structure of the boat, the better. And there's a couple of techniques from modern boat building that really lend a hand in traditional boat construction. And one is a plywood and fiberglass deck, which we'll get to another episode for sure as we go forward. And the other is aluminum bulwarks. The original wood bulwarks on the Western Flyer were built using the frame tops as the stanchions. The frames would protrude up through the covering board. The covering board is that extra wide plank that runs along the deck edge. To build this type of wood bulwark, holes the size of the frames would need to be cut all the way through the covering board. The frames would then pass up through the deck, creating the stanchions the planking and cap would be fastened to. we found over the years of repairing and replacing this form of construction, they never seem to get the needed maintenance to keep the leaks out, and they're always a major source of trouble. To eliminate the need for holes all the way through the deck, but still build strong and safe bulwarks, the shipyards in the Northwest have been turning to aluminum for well over 40 years. With the covering boards installed, a half inch aluminum base plate is fastened down. Four inch by four inch box sections of aluminum are then cut, fit, and tacked into place. And a half inch top plate is added also. There was also a half inch plate added in the way of the chain plates to give extra security once the rigging is installed. Is 
Unlike wood, aluminum needs to fit exactly how you want it to look when it's welded out. There's no going back with a power plant or even a sander to smooth out any of those small imperfections. So there's extra time taken to make sure that the shear line is smooth and fair to the eye. There's no flat spots or hard spots in it before any of the real welding can begin. I don't think so. See, but it was left and then I'm kind of down. Yeah, that may have been I know the front screw was fit already. I would not have been I think I just take a little bit off the back of this and we're there. Where did I do my okay. right here? At least we're close enough for a welder. Now we can just find one. <laughs> If you've never worked with aluminum, I think you'd be shocked how easy it works. Most of the tools we use to fit and shape the aluminum are the same as for woodworking. Power planers, skill saws, table saws, grinders, and even routers. It's probably only a little bit harder than some of the hardwoods we use. The only real challenge when building this type of bulwark is to make sure you've created a nice fair to the eye line before you weld it out. And then to be extremely deliberate with your welding. Like with any metal welding, if you get too much heat on one side of a stanchion, it can easily pull everything horribly out of fair. We don't want to work pinks into a packet round either. The line, at least I didn't cut to like these lines. <laughs> yeah. So it needs a little bit on this corner. After all the aluminum is welded out, the sepal planks will be fastened to the outside. There will be an in well added to the inside and the whole thing will be topped off with an inch and three quarter by eight inch purple heart cap. This method of construction eliminates the need for any deck penetrations. It's incredibly strong and once painted out, passes easily for wood. Once everything is fully welded out, the bulwarks are removed from the boat they're clean, sanded, and prepped for paint. When they get permanently installed on the boat, they'll be bolted down using a combination of stainless steel screws and stainless steel bolts, and they'll be fully bedded to the covering boards in a layer of Sikaflex. Bearing any kind of major damage, this form of construction will last well over 30 years with zero leaks. So a couple of weeks ago, I sat down with Pete Rust and Tim Lee from the Shipwrights Co-op. Kind of get their feeling on COVID-19, how it affected the project, their company, the timeline. I asked Pete about the house, got some insight into that. And I asked Tim about the timeline, what's coming up this summer and how that's looking. I'm Tim Lee, I'm an owner here at Port Townsend Shipwrights Co-op and I'm co-leading the Western Flyer with my partner. And I'm Pete Rust, another owner of the Port Townsend Shipwrights and happy to be co-leading with Tim. So a couple weeks ago, um, we brought, just three of us came back, and uh, Pete, me, and Ryan, who's been working with us, and we hung the sponsons and kind of patterned for the guards. And then uh, the second week, it was just me and Ryan for a while, kind of getting ready. And so when they came back, Pete started doing the 
making and hanging the guards. And then we got Brad Lato with us and he and I started patterning the base plates and the aluminum stanchions for the, for the bulwark so that we can finish the last of the planking. We're gonna finish the planking, do the caps, guards, and caulk and fare the boat. And um, then probably after that, we'll start in on the deck and uh, letting Pete get the house back on the boat. Yeah, so the house is on hold for now uh, while we finish the bid portion of the hull. So I've been kind of helping primarily with that crew. Um, once we do get back to the house, um, the, the main thing that I want to do before it goes on the boat is basically there's some structural stuff with the sills. Um, it's got to be strong and good and ready to fly again. Uh, I also want to finish the majority of the exterior. Uh, anything that's di more difficult to do up on the boat, up high on narrow side decks and high above the ground. Um, I'd like the exterior to be kind of as complete as possible, including pre-making the, the flybridge uh, sort of weather break. I want to build that down low on the ground uh, in a removable fashion and uh, stash it away until the, until the house gets put on and then we can install it later. But that's way up in the air where you're actually your head's in the rafters up there. So I really don't want to build that up there. So that's pr that's probably it. Then the house can go up, and and uh, you know the the inside floor of the house is is uh, is on, which indexes the sill, and um, the deck is prepped and and pretty much leveled out, ready to match the existing sill. So um, in the interior portion, I would rather just do once it's on the boat. The boat's going to have to roll basically out. roll out and crane the house on, um, especially since we know it's too heavy now and it weighs more than it did when it came off. Right. We can't really Legally. use that <laughs> crane again. So, um, yeah, and I think we have options there. We could put it on. Uh, there will be kind of a margin board around the exterior of the house, around the sill, so there'll be like a little wiggle room for the install. So we could deck up close to it. Um, or we could just put it on and deck, you know, it's got to get bolted. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to see through the deck um, to do the bolting and whatnot. It'd be much more convenient for drilling and kind of getting all that to bolt it back down. So, you know, in some ways when we're doing the bulwarks, it'd be nice to have the deck on just so you're not, you know, walking on scaffolding and, um, but it doesn't, we can always just put some temporary planking down and, and go and, and not let that slow us up. So I think the bigger thing is like Pete was saying, like where the house is sitting right now, you can walk off the top of the house to a to a wood shop. So the so the time savings of having like when he's building the fly bridge, the time savings of just being able to walk right over and cut something on a bandsaw and then walk back onto the boat as opposed to climb down a ladder, climb down the stairs and then climb up the side of the house. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> so where it is right now it's pretty convenient for working on the house. Yeah, so the next the next sequences, um, again, a lot of this depends on the economy and uh, and um, just kind of how we approach them, what crew we have available. So immediately is get the bulwark stanchions on, uh, get the back part of the bulwarks built, finish the planking. Yeah, then we can finish the planking above then, the guard. Then we can cork and get the boat corked, coat of paint on it. It'd be nice to get, get it uh, at least sealed up. Uh, Establish the water line, get the top and bottom at least with one coat of paint just to slow down drying during the summer. Um, lay the deck, lay the plywood sub deck, lay yep. the, the fur overlay, yep. caps guards, get the house on, build the fly bridge. Yeah, at this point, um, nobody other than employees and a very few um, invited people get to come inside the building we're trying to so none of the mezzanine viewing is happening um, we still open the front doors you know if anybody does come up we make sure that they don't come into the building or they stay you know 10 feet back from the opening of the door and they can you know they're welcome to come see it when the doors are open
Hey, you made it to the end of another chapter in the Western Flyer rebuild. I gotta say thanks for being patient. I know it was a little bit of time between the last episode and this episode. I've got a couple of collaborative projects I'm putting together about the Western Flyer. They're actually coming out later this summer. I think you really enjoy watching those. They'll be on this channel and a couple other spots. But you guys know the drill. I love making these videos. I love sharing the project. And if you enjoy watching it, why don't you consider subscribing? And until next time, thanks again. The whole deck and house is a quarter of the project, right? <laughs>